In this video, we talk about what rolling wave planning is. To start with, let's review the playbook ceremonies. The, that is the, the steps that you have to do in order to make the playbook methods uh, successful. Ceremony one is build a good baseline plan using decentralized planning and critical chain project management philosophies. Ceremony two is to conduct effective daily huddles. And ceremony three is what the topic of this video is about, is to conduct effective weekly rolling wave planning. If you were to sail a ship from Los Angeles to Hong Kong and all you did was took an initial bearing and never turned the wheel, never made any adjustments, <clears throat> how likely is it that you would arrive in Hong Kong? The answer is highly unlikely, you know, probably impossible because there's external factors, winds, currents, that are gonna take you off course. And so you, you'll need to course correct along the way in order to arrive at your des destination. And if you think of how far you deviate from the optimal path, you know, the goal is to minimize those deviations. And so maritime sailors take real-time measurements for where they are and they course correct all the time in order to minimize those deviations. Well, executing a project isn't really any any different. There's all kinds of external factors that take will try to take the project off course. And uh, our goal is to course correct more often and review really where we're at so that we can arrive uh, at our destination. In other words, the completion of the project as soon as possible, as early as possible. In the traditional project management life cycle, um, we do a lot of upfront planning. So we try to plan out the entire project in lots of detail, um, assuming we can plan everything that we'll need to do and when we'll need to do it and who will need to do it. Uh, so we spend a lot of time and effort doing that. And then at the more we execute and the farther we get into the project, the less and less the plans are updated and the less and less the plans really reflect reality. And therefore, the plants become very, uh, well, less and less useful as well. So Agile adopted a different approach. And in, in the Agile software development approach, you plan what you're getting ready to go do in the next iteration. And iterations are time boxed. So they may be two weeks or three weeks or maybe four weeks, something like that. But we plan and then we execute. And then we plan more and then we execute. And we just continue that process for the entire duration of the project. <clears throat> and it looks kind of like a standing wave. I don't know if that's where the expression rolling wave planning uh, you know, came from. Uh, it's just kind of interesting. In fact, I think rolling wave planning is, is an older term uh, than, than, than the agile approach. But it's the same basic concept. We're going to plan what it is that we're going to need to go do next and then execute, and then revisit our plan, and then execute, and revisit our plan, and then execute. Of course, we need to have a high-level plan. We need some visibility to when we think we're gonna get to different phases of the project. So it's we'll have a high-level plan, and we'll have that visibility, but it won't be in lots of detail. The only thing that will be in lots of detail are, are the activities that we're getting ready to do next. You know, things in the next iteration that need to be in a good level of detail. And what I mean by uh, good level of detail, I'm talking about tasks with durations typically one to three days, with the exception of uh, lead, you know, lead times and things like that. So you have a good detailed plan for the next iteration. And in, uh, in the integrated hardware product development world, the next iteration might be four weeks or it might be six weeks or eight weeks, and it might change or vary at different um, stages of the project. In concept development, for example, it might be two weeks because it's hard to plan what we're gonna do much beyond that. Uh, whereas if we're in a, a procurement phase and we're waiting on parts to arrive, uh, we may have to make our iteration timeframe more like eight weeks or you know, 10 weeks or something like that. Anyway, we have good good level of, of detail in this this next iteration. We have an outline level of detail in the iteration that comes after that, 
and then we have things that we'll just generically call placeholders. You know, so there's, there's activities in the plan that account for those things like uh, verification and validation testing. And maybe it's just set to be, you know, eight weeks or something of that nature. And then as we go with a regular cadence, we plan in detail what we're getting ready to do next. And then we continue to refine the level of detail the farther out that, the farther out that we go. So that's what we mean by rolling with planning. <clears throat> and there's a lot of benefits of having this level of detail. <clears throat> this may be a level of detail that you're not used to. But when we have good detailed plans, we get a much better estimate of how much effort there really is. You know, that's the work. Therefore, we get a better estimate for how long the work will take. We get better visibility to the demands on the resources so we can manage that better. We get better visibility of the true criticality of the tasks. Therefore, everyone's priorities are correct every day. And we don't mistakenly lose time working on the wrong thing at the wrong time. Uh, we ultimately, the goal is to increase the performance of the project, the execution of the project. So these things add up to giving us smoother and faster flow. We, we're, you know, we're operating at a higher level of excellence as far as our ability to execute projects in a, in a timely manner. We also get faster feedback. When, I, when the task durations are small, I, I get feedback more often and earlier. And I know with higher confidence how we're tracking overall. And the earlier that we know that we're maybe getting off track or going to experience some kind of delay, the more options we have available to us to mitigate that loss of time. Whereas if we find out later, we have fewer options available to us. And what happens in that environment is we just keep putting the squeeze on everyone that comes after us. Um, so the detail also then gives us more accurate picture of the status or health of the project and ultimately greater predictability on really when we're likely to uh, reach that next milestone, et cetera. And really, we're trying to balance the level of detail. It would be great to have the level of detail all the way out to the end of the project, but it's an incredible amount of work to create all that. And it's an incredible amount of work to try to keep it all up to date. So there's a high transaction cost. And so really what we're trying to do is balance the, the value that we get by having the level of detail and getting that feedback faster so we can course correct more often and you know sooner with the cost of having more tasks in the plan and, and having more things to manage and, and upkeep and update. Uh, to contrast rolling wave planning with the daily huddles, the, the huddles are daily typically they're very tactical in nature. You know, we're just focusing on execution on a daily basis, uh, making sure everyone has what they need, uh, that the handoffs are smooth, that we're managing the blocks, we have visibility to where the queues are, you know, et cetera. It's really uh, very much about executing every day. And that's ultimately to keep the flow of the project smooth and to minimize delays that are avoidable. It helps us to get done sooner. Rolling wave planning is something that we do weekly or maybe bi-weekly. Um, it's, it's a strategic effort. It's when we go back to planning mode. We revisit what it is that we're going to be doing uh, in the next number of weeks. We make sure that our plan ref reflects that. We you know, also maybe are doing things like uh, identifying opportunities where um, the, the tasks that we planned before maybe are invalid or they need refinement or there's new risks and we need to flesh out the mitigation plans for those things. You know, that's all part of rolling wave planning. The goal is to keep the project going in the right direction, right? To help get us to our destination in, in a timely manner, in an efficient manner, um, so that we're not going off on tangents and reacting to those external forces that we were talking about. It's also to help keep the team working together as efficiently as possible. It's kind of like you, uh, we're, in a, we're in a boat, we're in a canoe, and we're, we're rowing. Everyone's got a paddle, but we want to make sure we're paddling in the same direction 
and ideally at the same time we're, we're getting the most operationally excellent efficient system possible also the, this helps us to ensure that the milestone dates and the plans up to date so therefore the milestone dates are up to date and therefore the buffer charts the health of the project is clear and accurate we know with confidence whether or not we're really tracking well or if, or if we are need to respond to some kind of schedule risk etc so that's what rolling with planning is uh, there's another video um, that talks about how to do rolling wave planning. So please watch the video. Thank you.